Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Question Time with myself, Harry Knight. I'm going to be having a look at some of the comments and questions that you guys have left us in various social media posts over the last couple of weeks. Um, I hope the conversations that we're going to have around them will be interesting for everybody. Um, so my, my first question today comes from Javier Bustinza. Um, Javier, I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly. Uh, but Javier was asking about what would happen if you took two boards and you had one at 6.8 uh, and one at 5.8, uh, but otherwise they were identical, same sort of outline and width and thickness and, and volume. Uh, how would uh, those boards differ when they were paddled or surfed? And the real simple answer to this is that, that it's basically impossible to do that. Um, but I think it's worth us having a look at the longer answer to that because I, I have heard similar questions a lot and I know that uh, a lot of shapers end up having very similar conversations with their clients. So let's just have a little think about that. Now, now the volume of a surfboard is exactly like the volumes that you used to calculate at, uh, at school in math class. So you have a, uh, a length, okay? by a width, by a thickness, okay, we multiply those up and we end up with our volume. Now, a surfboard is a pretty complicated shape uh, to do this to, you know, it's not a nice, a nice cube. Um, now, in fact, you know, with modern boards designed on a computer, you know, it's, it's pretty easy for the computer to figure it out. But you said six, eight and 40 liters, which is, uh, you know, a pretty standard uh, length to volume ratio for a performance shortboard shape. So uh, I went online and I found a, a board where there was one model that was 6'8 by 20.5 uh, wide by two and three quarters thick and that volume was 40 liters. Now they had exactly the same board, exactly the same model in a 5'8. Okay. Now that 5.8 was reduced down proportionally. You know, it was exactly the same shape, but in order to be the same shape, they had to reduce the width down to 18.5, and they had to reduce the thickness down to two and a quarter. Okay, and the resulting volume was therefore smaller. All of these numbers were smaller. The resulting volume was 25 liters, so almost half the size. Okay. Now, if we, let's say we were to try to keep, you know, as many of these numbers the same. So we had our 5.8, but we kept the 20.5 from before, and we kept the 2.75 from before. What we would end up with is a volume of about 34 liters. I, I tried playing around with this on some shaping software. Okay, now if we were to try to retain the 40 liter uh, volume in a 5.8, okay, without adjusting everything too much, so we'll keep as well the two and three quarters uh, thickness, we would have to take the volume all, uh, sorry, we'd have to take the width all the way up to 24.5 uh, and by this point this surfboard is starting to look like a, a sort of comedy cartoon character that's <laughs> blown itself up into a big balloon um, it, it, it's completely different shape and outline okay so I, I hope that that um, sort of demonstrates what what the problem with with the initial question is but but also just is a really good way to think about you know any time you adjust anything on a surfboard. You, you really can't adjust anything in isolation. You move one thing around, other things change because of it. And it's what makes surfboard design so interesting, but, but you know, at times so, so frustrating as well. Um, cool, okay. Uh, so let's, uh, let's clear the board, let's move on to the next question. All right, so our next question comes from somebody who wanted to remain anonymous, uh, but they were asking whether they should be concerned about the change in buoyancy as they move from salt water into fresh water. Uh, and this is a fantastic question. Um, you know, with more and more people surfing wave pools and river surfing becoming more popular, you know, we're seeing more and more people using their boards in fresh water. And you hear all sorts of different comments. So I thought we could dive into the details uh, a little bit more, okay? Now, the buoyancy of an object is all to do with 
uh, how much water we displace when we put that object in the water and the weight of that water. So when we talk about uh, fresh water, okay, let's get the fresh water up here, okay, versus salt water, there is a difference because of the added salt, the water, the salt water is a little bit heavier. Now we know that water, you know, in general, we talk about water being about one kilogram per liter. Um, but if we're going to get more pedantic about it, you know, fresh water is about 997 grams per liter. Okay, so it's three grams lighter than our, our one kilo. Salt water varies depending on where you go. The salinity of different uh, oceans and, and, and seas is different, but a, a good average is about 1,024 grams per liter. So 24 grams over our, our kilogram. Um, the, the, the range is about 1,020 to 1,029. So it's, yeah, 1,024 will do. So, there's our, our, our weight of water. Now let's think about uh, when we put our surfboard in, okay? So let's take a 30 liter surfboard, okay? So a 30 liter surfboard, uh, we drop it in the water and our fresh water is going, the displaced weight of that fresh water is going to be 29.9 kilograms, okay? And that's gonna produce an upward buoyant force of 29.9 newtons. Our salt water, the same board dropped into salt water, is going to produce 30.7 uh, 30 kilograms per uh, kilograms of, uh, of displaced water. Okay, so that is a, a difference. Okay, we've got uh, it, it's about a 2.6 uh, percent uh, difference when I when I ran the numbers. So 2.6 percent uh, difference between fresh water and salt water, which is not insignificant. But um, if we to put that into perspective, so our 30 litre board, if we were to be able to adjust our 30 litre board to compensate, uh, we would have to make the board 30.6 litres, okay? Now, that is a very, very small difference when it comes to a surfboard. I, I am told that, uh, you know, top level CT pro level surfers can feel half a litre of difference. You know, if you shape two identical, near enough identical boards and they're half a litre difference, they can feel it when they get in the water. I think for us layman surfers, we're very, very unlikely to feel half a litre of difference. Okay, it's really not going to be huge. Another way we could contextualise it is, is I'm about 80 kilos, okay? Um, it's a, about 180 pounds. Um, let's put some clothes on me for decency. Um, let's add in the weight of the surfboard as well. Let's, so let's say 85 kilograms, okay? So if I'm 85 uh, kilos, then again, this 2.6% difference is we're talking about 2.2 kilos, okay? Uh, of difference in my weight would be the same variation. Now, although that sounds like a lot, that is well within the normal daily fluctuations of an adult human, okay? We all fluctuate easily by two, three, even four kilos. Just as we eat, we drink, we go to the bathroom, we sweat, uh, our weight will easily fluctuate by that much. And it's why they tell you you should always, you know, if you're weighing yourself, you should always weigh yourself at the same time each day is, is because of this fluctuation, okay? so. Uh, is there a difference? Yes, there is. Um, should you be worried about it? No, I, I, I really don't think so. Uh, you know, if you are going to be surfing in uh, rivers or in uh, pools on a really regular basis, you know, sure, add, add half a litre, a litre of volume onto the board. It's not going to do you any harm. Um, if you're going to be jumping back and forth between the two things, no, I don't think you need to worry about it. You don't need to get another board to, to compensate for that. Now. I will put in the caveat that I know a lot of wave pools and wave parks uh, are recommending to their customers that you, you ride a slightly bigger board. And sometimes this is given as the justification. I, I think it's a lot more to do with the fact that everything else is different. You know, the whole environment's different. The mechanics of the wave are different. The timing and the technique for paddling and catching the wave is different and you're paying for every single wave. And the, the guys that run the parks don't want people to miss waves and go away unhappy. So 
the easiest solution for them is to just tell people, you know, ride a bigger board, ride a board that's a couple of liters bigger, and then everybody's happy. It's it's you know a nice easy solution. But uh, uh, you know, there we go. I, I I will add that you know our general rule when we're coaching here is, you know. An extra liter or two of volume is never going to do you any harm, and in most circumstances, it's going to do you a lot of favors. So, there's there's that little caveat. All right, I hope I hope that was interesting. Uh, let's move on to our next question. Okay, so our last comment comes from Phil Halloran. Uh, Phil, again, I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly. But uh, Phil's comment was on uh, episode seven of Surfing Explained series, uh, where we were talking about the rocker of a surfboard. And in, in particular, what we were talking about was if you, if you have a, a board, let's have a very banana shaped board here, okay? But we were talking about how when you have a, a surfboard with a lot of tail rocker in particular, that the, uh, the, the tail can end up being sucked down into the water and it can feel like um, the board's going a little slower and the analogy that we used is you know it's almost like surfing with a little bit of weight always stuck on your back foot. Now Phil pointed out that, that he wasn't totally sure that, that you know any low pressure underneath the tail would be sucking the tail down and that it might well be uh, actually caused by extra lift here in the middle of the board uh, pushing upwards um, and, and the board then pivoting and that's what makes it feel that way. Now uh, Phil, I would uh, agree with you to some extent. Um, so lift and drag are two sides of the same equation. So if we have a very banana shaped surfboard like this, and particularly with a, a lot of curve in the front of the board, then as that water flow hits the front of the board here, um, there's gonna be a, a high, it's gonna create a high pressure region. It's gonna create a lot of form drag but the result is gonna be a lot of lift and the, and the board may feel like, you know, that nose is being lifted and we have to sort of lean our weight forwards over it, okay? However, we also see the same effect. If we look at, you know, real classic uh, log, nose riding long boards, we often see boards that have a very, very flat rocker, almost no rocker, but then a kick in the tail like this, okay? Where the, ta the, the, the tail rocker kicks up quite exaggeratedly and we'll see the same effect of the tail being pulled down into the water. Now, what I will say, Phil, is, is you're right. It's, it's not to do with the water flow running along the bottom here. Doesn't, it, it does create, you'll see um, various uh, CFD, co uh, computational fluid uh, dynamics. Uh, you'll see animations that show uh, low pressure at the back of the board and high pressure in the middle but those are, are relative to each other, okay? And in one of the previous uh, episodes of this question time series, we spoke about how a fin generates lift uh, by creating a pressure difference between the top and the, and the bottom of the fin, okay? Same as an aeroplane's wing, and that creates lift. Now, although we might have a relatively low pressure at the back of the board compared to the front of the board, Surfboards are interesting because they operate in two different fluids. We've got water underneath and air above. So even relatively lower pressure water underneath is still gonna be way higher pressure than any air above it, okay? So what's actually causing it is that as the uh, water is running along, it's going to stick to that uh, bottom surface and it's going to exit the back of the board pointing slightly upwards, okay? Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If we're sending water upwards, that's gonna create a, a downwards force, okay? Now, I thought it would be interesting to just try to, to sort of calculate a little bit. So I had a look at a few different surfboards and, and I got a protractor out and I, this was just eyeballing it, but I reckon a good average for shortboards is about a 10 degree uh, of, of tail rocker would be an average. Now, again, if we just, we need to think about how much water is involved. Now, I don't know how thick this uh, flow of water underneath the board is, you know, how, how, how deep it goes to where the board is having an effect. But let's be really conservative and let's, let, let's say about an inch thick, okay? Two centimeters thick on the bottom of the board. And we obviously can't use the entire surface area of the bottom of the board, but 
let's be conservative and talk about a 20 centimeter across the board. Okay, that's about half the width of a standard shortboard. So again, that's fairly conservative. So we've got uh, two centimeters thick by 20 centimeters uh, across. And then I just want to think about uh, one meters length of the surfboard. And you'll see why in a second, but if we times that by uh, 100 centimeters, one meter, we end up with a volume of four liters of water. Okay, now the reason why I want to talk about one meter length is that we can talk about surfboard speed as in meters per second. Okay, and again, we'll be conservative and we'll say four meters per second. Okay, at four meters per second, that's about nine miles an hour, that's 14 kilometers an hour. Um, that means we've got 16 liters. Okay, if we're, if we're doing four meters per second, we've got 16 liters of water passing through the bottom of the board every second. Going back to our previous uh, equation, that's, that's going to be about 16 kilograms of weight of water running along the bottom of the board and being pointed upwards at 10 degrees. Now, if we think about that, uh, we are very quickly going to exceed the abilities of my mathematics. <laughs> I'm afraid I, I did try to learn, but um, Figuring out vector components was, was just a little bit beyond me. If there are any mathematics students out here that want to have a little go at figuring out the power of, you know, the downward force of that, uh, I would love, love to hear the answer. So uh, yeah, over to you guys. Um, but suffice to say, what I did find was a couple of papers where they were looking at thrust vectoring on fighter jets and you know the, the, where they can angle the nozzles up and down it's normally actually by about 10 degrees and it made a huge huge difference to lots of aspects of of the airplane so i can only assume that it would also have a fairly big effect on our surfboard so yeah i i, I hope that's interesting phil i hope that uh is sort of an interesting continuation of, of the discussion um, if anybody has any comments or feedback on anything i've said today uh, throw it into the comments i'd love to hear it and uh, if anyone has any questions, you know, always just leave them in the comments underneath our videos. And uh, if, uh, if I can get around to them, I will do. Um, for now, from me, take care and see you next week. Bye-bye.